Hi, um, I thought I'd uh, just do a brief video about um, a bit of maintenance that you can perform on your 5.510 atomizers, um, should you think that's a good idea or not. Um, obviously every atomizer is designed specifically to be a disposable device. Uh, the more they get used, um, their performance reduces, the less vapour that you get and eventually um, they may fail altogether or they may just carry on for a very very long time but um, you know not performing as well as they would have done when they were brand new. So um, is there anything that you can really do? Well of course there's all sorts of clever ideas out there about how you can clean them but at the end of the day an atomizer is primarily a heating coil um, which has got a dead short across it from a battery that is chucking um, in some cases quite a lot of amperage and voltage at it which makes that uh, uh, coil uh, get very hot or even glow red hot depending on how much power you throw at it and that coil will inevitably uh, build up a lot of gunk and rubbish um, on it and the more it does um, the uh, the less well it will perform and uh, in addition the actual coil itself will start to break down um, and eventually it may very well burn out so um, the trick is to keep them as clean as you possibly can um, the trick with the 510 is uh, being able to get, actually get at the atomizer itself or the heating coil is a closed unit you can see that uh, obviously it's got the the base part and then it's got a cylindrical body and then inside um, at the base uh, is the actual atomizer um, uh, assembly itself so how do you get the base off the cylinder to be able to have a look at the atomizer well you can see that the paintwork on this particular atomizer is pretty grim um, well there's a good reason for that is because I've been uh, using these on them uh, pliers and quite simply what I've been doing is I've been taking one pair of pliers and I'm not not going to be able to do this too well with uh, uh, through the camera but quite simply grabbing them like that uh, one end uh, is grabbing the base Let's put it in a bit more I'm trying to do this through the camera viewfinder which is not so easy and then grabbing the cil cylinder as close to the base as possible and then starting to twist them like that as if you're unscrewing the two now the two are not actually physically screwed together but this motion does get the um, cylinder off the base of the atomizer now what I'm going to have to do is uh, take it out of camera view because I simply can't do it but uh, there you can see the cylinder is starting to come away from the base of the atomizer just another quick pull here and it will be off there we go so now the cylinder is off the atomizer base be very careful with this not to um, hold it too tightly because you could crush a cylinder but it's a fairly substantial piece of metal and is not going to bend too easily but be careful nonetheless so now you've got the atomizer exposed and um, well, I've got a macro setting on here it's not uh, getting into too great a detail um, but you can see there you've got the um, wire wool type wick bridge and then inside as I say the uh, I don't think the uh, camera is really good enough to get a close-up image but inside just let me get something to uh, use as a pointing device um, here we go inside the atomizer or under the bridge along there is the heating coil and that's the bit that you want to clean now with the 510 when you first open it up you'll see uh, some fibers and those fibers are I don't know what they're made of whether some sort of nylon type um, deal I have no idea but the idea of those fibers is that as the juice hits uh, the uh, atomizer assembly it soaks into those fibers and it feeds the juice to the coil um, so it keeps the coil damp and as you know the 510 does run quite hot so keeping the 510 uh, coil fairly moist at all times is uh, also going to improve the longevity of the uh, atomizer but I tend to find that those that those um, fibers over time get quite hard and crusty and um, 
a fairly grim colour as well. So what I tend to do is I hook hook the um, fibres out. They'll 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 sort of be filling that uh, archway there. You can see, um, but that's where they'll be. And what you can do is you can pull them out with uh, a pair of tweezers, just whip them out. Um, but that does mean, of course, you don't have the facility of the fibres feeding the atomizer anymore. There's a bit of a price you pay if you're going to try and get at that coil, because it's the coil that we want to try and clean a little bit. Now, if I uh, just grab um, one second the tool that I use to try and clean it, which is very, very unsophisticated. All I'm using is a fairly cheap jeweler's screwdriver like that and literally all I do is I get the atomizer and I just get the screwdriver inside there and I start scraping away uh, sorry towards me uh, not away if you if you go in that direction you could catch the coil turns and break the atomizer so you want to bring it towards you like that and just try and scrape as much of the muck and rubbish away as you possibly can on both sides. Now, the uh, final tool to use is quite simply an old toothbrush and just gently clean it away both sides like that. Um, make sure it is a fairly soft toothbrush, you don't want anything too harsh going in there because you can damage the coil but you can be fairly vigorous with it and you'd be surprised how much muck and rubbish that gets off the uh, the coil and once you've gone through that process that's pretty much it from uh, uh, from my point of view of what I can do with it, if you can think of a, a better way of cleaning those coils without damaging them um, then uh, do let me know but uh, this process certainly um, increases the lifespan of uh, the atomizer uh, in my view and it also more importantly increases the performance um, quite a bit. Uh, once you've done that then obviously you need to close up the uh, atomizer like that. Um, because I've opened this a few times already it's actually quite loose but when you open one up for the very first time you'll find it pretty tight um, but there you go uh, that is just how I try and get a bit of extra life and uh, a great deal more performance over a longer period of time from my 510 atomizers and I can tell you now they uh, you know once you've done that um, you'll get a lot more uh, vapour out of it than you did previously. Um, the be thing to bear in mind, because you don't have those, uh, if you have removed the fibres or you do remove the fibres during this process, then um, you're going to result in the atomizer not holding on to as much juice for as long because there isn't that supply from the fibres in which case it will dry out quicker if it dries out quicker it's going to get hotter and uh, that, could, that in turn could burn it out so you need to have a bit of a balance here but uh, certainly after I've done this the vapour production um, improves quite considerably so there you go uh, incidentally I did look at other um, uh, atomizers such as the uh, 901 here um, but you can see in the 901 the actual atomizer base is right inside the tube and very difficult to get out the only thing you could possibly consider doing is clamping it in a vise and then putting a, a, a small screwdriver or something like that down the edge to see if you can tap it out frankly I don't think that would work too well this is just an adapter what by the way so that I can run it on um, 510 batteries um, but there you go, that's um, how I uh, try and give a little bit of maintenance to my 510 atomizers. hope you found that interesting. Be very careful, if you try this you could destroy your atomizers, so all at your own risk of course. Um, but if it means that you can run your atomizers for longer than um, they might have otherwise lasted, then... Uh, that's uh, then that's worth doing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that and found it useful, and uh, we'll see you again. Cheers for now.